Now that they're painted, let me give you a quick idea of how these things assemble. Uh, for the first one, these two halves basically go together. This one main gate kind of squeezes between the two right there. And then we have one wing on one side and one wing on the other side. The second layout we have are uh, in six different pieces here. This one right here uh, kind of hooks right in there. This one kind of that little edge kind of hooks around there. Basically we have one side that fits over here, the other side that fits over here. And the last, this little top piece here, uh, basically bridges between these two holes right here. The third and last display is probably the more complicated of the three. Uh, it's best to start with this inside one that's got the uh, little arch hanging from it. Uh, put the uh, Wrap the little uh, front around here, and then this one will kind of butt against here like this. This one will butt against this side right here. And then, of course, the sides on each side will kind of come in like that. And then we have two arches. I have them kind of going inward. So one will drop in between here, and the other one will drop in right between here. So you probably have to kind of adjust these in and out to get those to line up. Uh, where these things join together, if you take a look down in here where these small buildings touch the outer walls, the outer walls are just kind of barely hanging on. I mean, the bottom looks nice and solid, but the area where the solid outside wall is glued, there's only about an eighth inch that you're gluing onto. So it's not a real solid glue joint. So if you just handle this back and forth, you know, I, I worry just a little bit for it. I mean, right now I can lift it up from the middle and it feels pretty solid. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere. But what I'm gonna do to help that I'm going to take some uh, self-adhesive neoprene and stick it on the bottom. What that's going to do is that's going to protect the uh, surface of the table that we set it down onto. Now, if you can't find self-adhesive neoprene, you can buy a chunk of felt and just glue a chunk of felt onto the bottom so that this is a little bit easier on your tabletop. And it will also hold it together. Another idea is to glue it onto a piece of mat board or thin cardboard or something like that to give it a little more stability so when you set it down and lift it up and set it down you don't end up chipping the ends of what we have here. So I'm going to show you my method of using the self-adhesive neoprene. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over to the white side that we're going to kind of draw on. And oddly enough, the neoprene is exactly one foot wide when I bought it. And this castle is just about one foot wide as well. So I'm going to position it on there. Let's scoot it back up into the camera a little bit. So I'm positioning I'm making sure the back is... Uh, the castle kind of overlaps the back a little bit so there's no neoprene sticking out behind it. And so what I'm going to do is when I got it set in position, I'm just going to take a little watercolor marker and I don't want to draw on my castle. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, draw around here and then when we remove it, you'll see that we've got this uh, green line. Now you can simply cut this with a pair of scissors. Since I have a cutting mat and an X-Acto knife handy, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it about an eighth inch back and once I've got that, then you can take and you can kind of put this back here and we'll just make sure that this fits. At this point, what I'm going to do is go ahead and peel this backing off. Sometimes it peels off easy. Sometimes it's not so easy. There we go. There's that right there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom. Make sure we've got it centered pretty much side to side. Let's see how are we. Ah, there we go. That looks good. That goes up there. That goes up there. There we go. That covered the bottom pretty nice and it doesn't stick out anywhere. So at this point, you can set it on the table. You hear that? It gives it a nice cushion. Now I wanted the uh, uh, wall portion of the Dungeon Master screen to be something sturdy. So what I had found are these plaques. I bought three of these plaques. I got these things for five dollars each from a local uh, local store that does trophies and uh, the front side of it is kind of beveled and this is laminated wood it's not uh, I mean it's real wood but it's got a laminate on it to make it look like it's uh, uh, stained wood. Uh, to cover up the back side uh, what I found were calendars now there's a couple nice things about using a calendar for the background for one it's printed on a nice thick stock so it'll actually hold up pretty well the second is that most of these are varnished on the press 
So they have a fairly protective coating because usually you're flipping calendar pages up and back and you don't want them to be scratched up. So there's actually a printed varnish that's on there. The third thing is that these are actually 12 inches exactly in size. So I'm going to come up with a really nice background to go behind mine. Now I've placed the photos behind the castles here and I think they look pretty good. I think I'll probably go with that. But I did want to see what it looked like without the pictures and actually just putting them onto the plaque. So if I, if I take this out and I don't want the keyway showing so I might turn it to the good side of the plaque up to the front. And it's possible I might just want to do it that way so that I just have the castles in the wood. And I'm trying to figure out which I like better. The sky is, uh, adds more color, it's a little more uh, interesting, but that's kind of a nice look too. It almost, it almost works well that way. Well, I've decided to go ahead and mount the picture on here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Scotch double-sided permanent tape. I'm going to be sure to use the permanent tape so this thing will stick really well. Now, I've cut this to be just a little bit smaller. There's about a sixteenth inch of brown going around the outside of here. And that's the way I wanted it because after I put the tape on, what I'm going to do is very carefully take a knife and cut the edge of that tape, peel the excess tape off, and so it'll be stuck down all the way to the edge and you will never see that there was uh, tape on there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, strips of tape and I'm going to take them, uh, I'm going to make sure that they're longer uh, than what I need. So I'm going to take and uh, tear off the strip here. And what I'm going to do is, whoa, got to grab onto the ends, and I'm going to go above the edge a little bit here. I'm going to go above the edge of blood, and if you want, I mean, you can just overshoot it. I can go like halfway above it, and that would be fine. I want to be sure that I get the uh, edge, but when I place this, I want to be sure that I can see where the edge of the plaque is, and I think I can do it that way. Uh, you might on the video not be able to see where the top edge of the plaque is, but I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a number of strips of tape going down here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to overlap them, but I'm going to leave probably about an eighth inch space between them. So it doesn't have to be, I'm going to use up a lot of tape on this. I'll probably use up most of the roll. Now at this point I've completely covered the surface with tape here and I'm going to uh, go ahead and stick the picture on. Now be aware that this is pressure sensitive tape so uh, if you accidentally drop it you should be able to pick it up and take it off of there carefully so uh, if you press it down then it's going to be a little bit more of a more of a deal to get it up. So what you want to do is you want to be extremely careful and I am going to kind of bend this corner down so I can see where it goes and I want to try to get this thing as absolutely straight as I can. So I'm going to gently put it on there. And I know I've got about a sixteenth inch across the top to go. So that's going to be pretty close. And that's going to be pretty close. Yeah, I think I've about got it here. I didn't get it perfect, but I got it really good. So I'm going to start from the middle and I'm going to go ahead and work it out. And that thing is going to be on there really, really nice and tight. Okay, I think this will work just fine. So I'm going to push in a good little bit. I'm just going to follow the edge of that all the way across. Get right on in there. I'm not pushing super hard. I want to push just enough pressure that I can uh, be sure that I cut that tape. And then I'll take that tape, peel it off, that is just perfect. There's no exposed glue and that edge is down solid. Now I'm going to do both sides the same way, only when I do both sides I'm going to end up pulling these little pieces of tape off as I go. Now to adhere this onto the uh, picture background that we have here, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Aline's Tacky Glue because it's, it's thicker, it holds well. I don't think it'll have a problem with, uh, with wrinkling the picture on here as long as I get the glue pretty much centered behind the castle. I do want to mention one thing. When you apply the glue, be sure that you apply it to the high spots. In other words, there's a strip of columns right here and a strip of columns here and a strip of columns here. Hit all of those strips of columns. If you put glue down into the recesses, it's not going to do you any good. Okay, I've got a good amount of glue on the back of this. And if you're worried about, you know, glue maybe squishing out too much, you can always just kind of or you don't want it dripping down, you can always kind of rub it uh, down with your finger a little bit. I want to leave a pretty good solid uh, amount on the surface because this may not set perfectly flat against 
the uh, uh, backing here. So I want to be sure that there's some glue. This is the only thing that's going to be holding it. Uh, holding the uh, uh, paper to the wood is that double stick tape and I know I've got a good seal on that. So this should hold it pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to line it up and I am going to push it down on there and then stick it to it and then let it dry. Yeah, look at that. See, no glue is squeezing out that I can see. So what I can do is after I got that stuck, I can take this and kind of, you know, shove it up against the wall here. And uh, uh, that way, you know, it can kind of dry against that. And I can even like push a book or put something else in front of it to be sure that gives a good straight bond and it doesn't move while we go ahead and do the others.